how do you stop a foreclosure sale after a wrongful foreclosure judgment has been entered against you? My name is Michael Waslick. I'm a Florida foreclosure defense attorney here in Florida with Ricardo and Waslick, together with my partner Jason Ricardo. The two of us help people just like you overcome foreclosure and debt collection with dignity. And today I'm answering the question, how do you stop a foreclosure sale if you've been wrongfully foreclosed in Florida? Now, the question comes up when there's already been a wrongful foreclosure judgment entered against you. Now, it can be wrongful for any number of reasons. Um, what usually happens is there's some evidence that the bank didn't have the right to foreclose, but at the foreclosure hearing, at the final hearing, whether it was a trial or a summary judgment hearing, for whatever reason, the judge did not agree with you that the evidence uh, in your side was uh, enough to show it was a wrongful foreclosure or just simply overlooked something or maybe made a, a legal error. Uh, all of those things are possible. But for whatever reason you think you've been wrongfully foreclosed on and you're staring down the barrel of a sale date and you've got to stop it. There's a couple different options that you have for stopping a foreclosure sale if it was wrongfully entered against you. Number one, uh, depending on your timing, you may be able to move for a rehearing. Now, Florida Rules of Civil Procedure, the rules that govern the court system, uh, have a process for a motion for rehearing or new trials, Rule 1.530, and basically what it provides is that if there's some basis for a new trial, whether it's a legal mistake the judge made, uh, some new case law that came out in the interim, or something like that, some reason that the judge might want to reconsider his own ruling or her own ruling, that you can ask for a rehearing, and you have to do that within 15 days of the entry of judgment. So that's a very tight time frame. And in order to do so, you have to point out some kind of evidence that was overlooked. You have to point out some kind of legal uh, uh, guiding uh, precedent that the judge may have failed to follow or may not have known about, uh, may not even been presented to the trial court. Um, you know, for example, a surprise issue comes up at trial, you go back to your desk, you research the case law, you find out, oh, the law says this result, this is the result that should have happened, not what happened here. So judge, I'm, now that you know, now that I'm giving you this case law, uh, you should uh, change your mind and reverse it the other way. So a motion for rehearing or new trial is one option. Uh, number two, uh, you can move for relief from the judgment. Now, there's another rule of civil procedure, 1.540, that provides in certain circumstances, you can move for relief from a foreclosure judgment. Uh, that usually comes into play where there's some kind of lack of notice of trial, a due process violation where you didn't get fair notice of the upcoming hearing, uh, or if there's been some kind of clerical error that prevented uh, you from attending the trial. So for example, if a lawyer's uh, assistant miscalendar something and the lawyer doesn't show up, Rule 1.540 allows them to say, look, I, I would have been there, but you know, I put it the wrong day on my calendar, and so we should be entitled to have a, uh, a do-over. Um, there's a very limited number of circumstances that Rule 1.540 comes into play. Uh, the rule actually sets out some of those things, and uh, they're more limited than they look like. So for example, one of the options is fraud on the court. And most people have the mistaken idea that if a bank witness lies at trial, that 1.540 should come in and say, well, that's fraud on the court. Well, that's not what fraud on the court means. The case law limits it uh, to a much more restrictive uh, set of circumstances. But, uh, but there is a very, very small set of circumstances where fraud on the court can be a basis to reopen the uh, judgment. Uh, in addition, again, lack of notice, um, if there was a lack of service of process, if the uh, foreclosure judgment was outside the jurisdiction of the court, meaning, for example, the property was in a different county or the complaint didn't ask for a foreclosure judgment, those are examples of what you can get relief from in a 1.540 motion. Most of those have to be brought within one year. There's a very, very small set of circumstances where you can bring it at any time, but the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. Even though you might technically not have a deadline, the judge is going to be harder to persuade if the judgment is 10, 20, 30 years old, uh, something like that. So the sooner you realize there's a mistake in the judgment, the sooner you should be moving. Now, if you've already exhausted 1.530 and 1.540, or the time has passed for those, um, you may have a right to file an appeal. Now, uh, an appeal 
does not necessarily stop the foreclosure case, but if you appeal, you can ask the court for a stay pending appeal. And in some circumstances, the, the court will grant that. It is the discretion of the court whether or not to grant that. The court has the choice. Uh, in my experience, most plaintiffs will not kick you out of the house while an appeal is pending. Even if the sale formally takes place, most people get to stay in their home while they're appealing a foreclosure judgment. Now, if you have a legitimate basis to appeal, that usually is a way for you to get some kind of breathing room in order to not be evicted from your house too quickly. And if you win the appeal and the foreclosure judgment is reversed, maybe even the case gets dismissed, then the foreclosure sale is canceled altogether. If it's already been held, it's vacated completely. So that is, so an appeal is another good way of uh, stopping a foreclosure sale from being finalized uh, if you've been the victim of a wrongful foreclosure. And if you can persuade the appellate court that you've been the victim of a wrongful foreclosure, that case should be reversed at the very least and possibly even dismissed. Now, uh, an appeal needs to happen within 30 days of the time the judgment's entered. So that's a, also a very short time frame. So if you've missed that appeal deadline, you may be out of luck for that. Uh, but that is one of the ways that you need to, that you need to look at. So you've got a motion for new hearing or new trial. You've got a motion for relief from judgment. You've also got an appeal. Now there's a fourth way that you can stop a foreclosure sale from taking place, and that is through the right of redemption. Now what that means is if you have the money saved up that you've not been paying all along, um, because once a bank files a foreclosure, they're gonna stop taking your payments no matter what. Save that money so that when you get to the end of the road, if the foreclosure is wrongful, you can stop the foreclosure sale by walking to the courthouse with a check for the full amount of the judgment, paying it off, and then the foreclosure sale will be canceled. So that's the right of redemption. Um, prior to judgment, you have a right of reinstatement, meaning pay back the arrearages, but once the judgment's been entered, it's the right of redemption. Is that you or anyone else with an interest in the property, it may be a spouse, it may be a, a tenant, it may be somebody with a junior lien, can go into the courthouse and write, write a check for the amount of the judgment and save the property from sale by, by redeeming the judgment. So that's a fourth way. Now there's a fifth way as well, and that is you can file for bankruptcy. If you've not filed before, um, then you are allowed what's called an automatic stay and what the automatic stay does is it cancels any pending uh, court proceedings during the length of that stay until the bankruptcy judge says, okay, the bankruptcy or the, or the bankruptcy stay is lifted and the foreclosure can proceed. Anything that happens between the filing and the, the relief from stay, that order from the bankruptcy judge, anything that happens is void. It's, it's like it never happened. Now, a bankruptcy filing can act as a way to cancel a sale that's imminent. So if you have a sale date coming up in a few days or next week, that can act to cancel the sale because in most cases, it's going to be two, it's going to be several weeks or even a couple months before the bankruptcy judge will offer relief from stay. So if you've got something coming up very soon, that first bankruptcy filing can cancel that sale. Um, if you are pre for, if you're pre trial, if you're pre judgment, uh, a bankruptcy filing can cancel an upcoming sale, uh, trial date rather, or hearing date. Uh, now, those will be rescheduled after the stay is lifted unless you go through the bankruptcy all the way through. Now, we don't handle bankruptcy, but we can hook you up with bankruptcy lawyers who know how to stop foreclosure. Uh, but what we do is we do all the other stuff. We do the motion for new trial or rehearing. We do the motion for relief from judgment. We do the uh, uh, appeals in, in certain limited cases, um, or we can connect you with, with a highly trained appellate lawyer who knows the foreclosure process. Um, so, and then um, we can help you also, if you need to redeem the property, we can help you walk through that process. So if you have a foreclosure judgment entered against you and there's a sale date coming up and you wanna know how to stop that sale, you need help right now. You, if you miss a deadline, you're gonna miss an opportunity to cancel that sale date. You're gonna miss that opportunity to get that judgment uh, vacated or overturned, you're going to miss that opportunity to cancel that sale and stop the sale entirely. So what you need to do is you need to get professional help involved right away. If you want help doing that, uh, my partner Jason and I are looking forward to talking to you. So if you've watched this video, what I want you to do is get a pen, and if you need to rewind the video, that's fine. 
I'm going to give you the number a couple times. It's 352-567-3173. That's 352-567-3173. And when you call that number, you're going to ask for an appointment with Mike or Jason. We're the lawyers at Ricardo and Waslick. Mention that you saw this video, the How to Stop a Wrongful Foreclosure Sale video. And we're going to give you a free 30-minute strategy session to help give you clarity about what your next steps are going to be and give you the information you need to make a decision. And then if you want us to help you, then if you qualify for help, we are going to work with you to get that foreclosure sale stopped so that you don't have to worry about it anymore, even if the foreclosure is wrongful. So give us a call. Again, that number is 352-567-3173. Jason and I are looking forward to talking to you. Uh, we're going to give you that free 30-minute strategy session. So please call us today. Don't wait. Don't wait. If you miss a deadline, it could be fatal to your case. So do not wait. Call us today. Get the soonest possible appointment to talk to us. Uh, my name is Mike Waslick, Florida Foreclosure Defense Lawyer with Ricardo and Waslick here in Florida. Thank you for watching this video. Jason, I look forward to talking to you. We'll see you on the next one.